I'm, I'm interviewing a superstar here. This is her first. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, in my circles, yeah. Whenever I told my buddies I'm, uh, I got Elias coming on uh, to talk with me, they're like, "That guy? Oh, I love watching his fights. I saw him in the Ultimate oh, Fighter. Yeah, it's, it's appreciated. Cool. Much appreciated. That's cool." So um, let's start with uh, what's what's upcoming with you. You got some. Uh, you're putting the gloves on pretty soon. Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, Going to be a driving force in regards to cannab cannabis, but also um, mixed martial arts coming back uh, post COVID. Obviously, uh, as with many different industries, um, what do you call athletics and full contact sports has been on a pause. And uh, my game my game plan is to validate my therapeutic use exemption and um, be the first uh, MMA uh, competition back post COVID. So this will be your first fight when you're able to openly say I'm using THC? Uh, yeah, well, yes. Um, technically, uh, my last fight, because in Ontario, and this all happens to do with uh, the fact that, as you would know, uh, every jurisdiction, every province has their own kind of regulatory component. Uh, in Ontario, they, you know, grandfathered in because it just, they never tested for it. Uh, cannabis has never been tested. So technically I was medicating um, in Ontario for my last fight, which I got a, a TKO finish in the, the third round. Um, and that was obviously a, a case study in regards to what happens if I'm allowed to medicate. And it was the best cut I've ever had, both mentally, physically, uh, being able to compete at a, plain, a level playing field uh, as a patient and athlete. Uh, my next fight is the first time that I'll be able to validate um, my therapeutic use exemption in, in uh, a jurisdiction that, uh, uh, what's it called, that will respect my my rights. And what that also does is uh, not only for myself, set precedent for all athletes moving forward that they won't have to do that same hurdles in uh, jumping through, um, you know, regulatory and, you know, big big pharma uh, component in, uh, you know, the, the prescription pills that I had to uh, exhaust before I got to what I and my doctor already knew that cannabis was right for me. So you obviously fought before when not being able to use THC. What do you what do you feel is the big difference from you know when you used to fight with no THC to to now you're training and fully in, involved in it? Um, one, it's the peace of mind to know that um, the day to day uh, and the um, you know the rugged training regiment in regards to mixed martial arts. Um, no matter how hard it gets, I have the ability to medicate um, and actually uh, recover in a way that my body specifically needs. Um, my case was an individual one. Obviously, it has greater ramifications for other medical patients, um, but it, it's just also the, the aspect of breaking that stigma of my own medicine uh, and not having to be apologetic and kind of being a little, a little opposite of a Canadian, unapologetically, uh, what they call it, fighting for uh, my right to do so. And um, more specifically on the medical side, I really feel the difference in regards to the difference of um, um, uh, just cannabis actually treats my condition of bilateral neuropathy uh, in regards to the stingers, the, ant the inflammation, um, the different types of numbness and uh, cramps that I feel throughout the day are reduced tenfolds with cannabis opposed to anything else where I really feel that cannabis treats my nerve damage where pills just try and mask it. I've been uh, I've been following you on social media and seeing your you know your workout regimens and you're you're really throwing a lot into this fight. What What is your cannabis uh, medication or meditate? Um, let me restart that. Um, yeah. Like when you um, when you use cannabis throughout the day like before you train during after? Yeah, I use cannabis throughout my day. Um, obviously, it really depends on how I feel each and every morning. Um, what I'll do is I'll wake up and um, I'll usually have a tincture uh, to start a one to one. Um, and from there, uh, depending on how my body feels, I'll even apply a topical uh, on uh, my upper extremities, uh, really target uh, my uh, what do you call nerve damage in my elbows and my wrists. Uh, and then from there, uh, kind of e extrapolating beyond just the term medical uh, cannabis, I uh, actually have uh, THC and THCA. So for me, uh, I actually use raw cannabis in my diet. Um, so for those that don't know, raw cannabis, uh, it's non-psychoactive. Um, it's the transfer, uh, or sorry, it's the adding of heat, which turns into THC. And then obviously when you cook it, 
it goes back down to THCA and that's how you get all of the, that, that uh, awesome from that. But um, in regards to THCA uh, in, the raw, in the raw form, uh, I put it in my smoothie. Um, I start my day with THCA and that's where I really get all the, the enzymes and the uh, what's called anti-inflammatory properties. And uh, THCA uh, in raw form is very similar to uh, uncooked uh, vegetables in the capacity that you'll get every single nutrient that's in it where when there is the applying of the heat, it will remove some of that uh, just in the process. So um, I usually you know, have uh, some raw cannabis with uh, my kale and then I'll, uh, you know, chock it full of protein and any other types of fruits uh, and, and whatnot that I'll put in there, you know, avocado, healthy fats. Uh, again, cannabis is uh, a big integral part of my overall routine as both patient and athlete. And on the athlete side, um, that includes uh, ingesting it as, uh, you know, a smoothie as I would every, any other athlete would. Uh, and then from there, I go to training, uh, and depending on how I feel, I, 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 um, I uh, medicate as appropriate. Um, being an athlete and advocate, I try to uh, um, advocate uh, the, the, the cleanest and the, the cleanest way I think I, I can medicate, and that's why I tend to use vaporizers. Uh, in that way, um, I can target it and actually dose it and be more on top of my uh, regimen as a patient um, after training. And from there, I'll either uh, recover in the sense of uh, stretching uh, and other types of physio and uh, you know prehab rehab uh, post training, and then uh, if I'm lucky, I'll sneak in a nap because naps save lives. <laughs> and then uh, I'll get back into training uh, for my second session because I have two days. And then from there, I'll, I'll vaporize as well um, thereafter. And I'm more turning heavy into the um, uh, heavier into the pain management aspect of what what would most people would say, uh, you know, uh, indica and and that kind of dominant um, a strain or, or um, purpose of my medicine towards the end of the evenings and then at night uh, because uh, I love dreaming and I, I'm a very lucid dreamer. I very much uh, high dose uh, CBD to finish the night in order to uh, what's called really remember my dreams because cannabis doesn't stop you from uh, dreaming, but you tend to not remember it when you uh, uh, medicate uh, more often. So uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I love dreaming and high CBD at the end to really uh, uh, fire off those anti-inflammatories. No, that's interesting. I, I didn't even know that about CBD and uh, you know, helping remember your dreams. So when you're, yeah. when you're walking down the, you know, the aisle with your, with your song on with this upcoming fight, are, are you planning to be, you know, a lot of THC in your system or is that like for a post fight or how are you going to go about that? Well, it's basically the way my therapeutic use exemption is, um, uh, works is it, first I called into question in their testing because they have a, a standard test for everyone and every body and every buddy is different, right? So you get the same test for a 105 pound female straw weight as you would a 265 pound heavyweight male, which doesn't really uh, work, especially when you look at the fact and dig deeper that all the standard of testing is essentially um, in your, uh, it's through fat soluble. So depending on how much fat you have in your body, it will stay in your body to the point where um, a lot more females, for instance, in the UFC have been flagging. So it persecutes them because of their body. Um, and also I, I know of many examples of heavyweights where cannabis has stayed in their system. A friend of mine, uh, was suspended because the threshold was 125 nan or 125 nanograms uh, in his uh, jurisdiction, um, and he had 150. So he was suspended. He became the champion, uh, and because he flagged for a, a prohibited substance, they took away his um, belt. They suspended him. They took away like I think 30 to 40 percent of his uh, previous fight person, uh, what's called fines, and he was suspended for like eight nine months. I think because he uh, came clean and because he did some type of like, not quite rehab, but like some type of like, oh, this is a bad substance uh, course. Uh, he was able to turn it in from like, I don't know, I think it was like nearly a year to like nine to six months. So, uh, you know, cannabis really has a stigma on it in the, the, the system and that's the system I'm trying to fight. And no bigger, starker difference actually, if we're gonna do an example would be someone like, um, 
someone like uh, Nick Diaz versus Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva had three different types of prohibited substance. Nick Diaz had one, cannabis. Um, Anderson Silva had actual um, performance enhancing drugs. Nick Diaz did not. Anderson got 14 months. Nick Diaz originally got five years. He was able to eventually whittle it down to 18 months. But again, it's the outdated stigma where actual steroid use is penalized worse than cannabis use. And that, that's something I'm trying to you know, a fight in my own sense, but obviously, so no other athlete has to go through those same hurdles. It's, it's, uh, it's when we look back at it, we'll realize how ridiculous it was that a, a plant uh, was persecuted and so were the people that used it. Did, did legalization in Canada like help with that stigma at all and in your circles and obviously in the, you know, the sporting events you're, you're participating in or is it still, uh, you know, closed minded conservative look on it? I'd say it's definitely open uh, in the last two years now. Um, moreover, because uh, in Canada, we're lucky enough to have medical cannabis rights, uh, as well as those uh, medical rights. Uh, and again, cannabis and more broadly, uh, it, it's been a much, not easier, uh, but rather um, understandable process where any questions, the commission, any question, the official that I had, I was able to give them reasons why through the Charter of Rights and Freedom, freedom why in regards to the, the British Columbia Charter of Rights and Freedom, uh, and explain why medical cannabis rights and uh, in, in sport and also uh, as a patient uh, applied here. And they were very understanding and uh, I was uh, successfully able to get approved for a therapeutic use exemption this past February. And again, one of the uh, interesting things, because obviously I started my therapeutic use exemption uh, in the UFC, which was through a U United States company called uh, USADA, which is the United States Anti-Doping Agency. And because they're funded by the U.S. government, uh, they have to adhere to all of the uh, rules and regulations that they have. And because cannabis is still a Schedule One drug, it doesn't have any medical property to it on, on the books. But ironically, um, because I was able to get a therapeutic use exemption in BC through the, uh, the commission, um, all North American commissions actually work in congruency with each other to have a smoother um, sport for boxing and MMA. So now um, I no longer necessarily have to argue medical cannabis rights moving forward in different direct jurisdictions. They have to prove why BC was wrong, and they tend not to do that. So the same thing happens with... Uh, you know, um, negative ruling. So let's say if someone was actually caught with a steroid in New York um, and they're suspended for a year uh, and they wanted to get a license in California, let's say, California would say, we're not going to license you until your suspension up. Well, now in this one, because I have a therapeutic use exemption, I could go to different uh, jurisdictions, uh, different states, different provinces that have medical cannabis and argue the same, uh, you know, the same therapeutic use exemption, and they would be more imply, inclined to uh, approve it. So ironically, going back to Canada uh, might have a full circle effect in going back to the U.S. And again, fighting in a way that other, um, other athletes and patients couldn't do in America because they don't have those medical cannabis rights or medical rights to argue. Do you think if, uh, you know, USA did what Canada d did and legalized it federally across the board, do you think that would just be like an immediate switch and the, the stigma would go away? Or do you think there'll be, you know, continuous need to, you know, what, what you're doing is amazing for the cannabis industry and, and for the cannabis community. Do you think once that's federally legal, it's an immediate switch or we'll still have to, you know, put up? I think it depends on who wins, right? Like uh, they have obviously an election coming up, but... Uh, for instance, uh, the Republicans, they're very much in, in, entrenched in regards to uh, uh, the, um, the private uh, prison system. So they have a lot of backers in that capacity, and they obviously want to keep the status quo, where uh, Joe Biden and uh, what's called uh, the um, Democrats are going to decriminalize it federally, which will open up a, a, the state's rights and the state's ability to choose for it. So I think uh, right away, places like California, Denver, um, uh, Colorado and other places that have uh, medical cannabis already might make that switch. Uh, well, whether it goes to some private entities or other jurisdictions lower than that, like for instance, 
um, athletics, uh, that's another uh, story altogether. But again, hopefully uh, my fight will uh, help uh, push that door open. And that's what I plan to do in Canada and the U.S. I just want to say you're you're an absolutely amazing uh, interviewer. You're uh, you're killing these questions, and you're very well. Oh, spoken. thanks, brother. No, thanks, man. It's, uh, all the experience is definitely showing. Yeah, so that. Canada just uh, celebrated its second year of legalization. You know what? What are some things uh, you think we've done good up here in Canada? Well, I think obviously, um, you know, just having that all the adult conversation uh, and putting uh, cannabis. Um, legalization and the end of prohibition uh for the most part in in the actual platform of a, a party was a huge first step and the fact that for instance the liberals won on that and opening that door was a huge fact a, a huge component in its own right um obviously the untangling of the different uh jurisdictions that we had and treaties we have uh, uh internationally like the UN and other places and 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 kind of showing the world how to do it. Obviously the um, legal components uh, and for that same factor where many different um, you know, legal entities in Canada have been able to show other countries uh, how to you know, decriminalize cannabis, how to open up a market uh, and show both the, 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 the public slash medical importance of it, but also you know, the free enterprise and, 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 and that aspect of it. Um, obviously, you know, as with any, any industry and any uh, community, there's, um, you know, there's trials and tribulations in regards to, um, you know, rolling out and Canada is no different. There's, there's pros and cons with anything, but I think um, just the fact of it no longer being illegal um, was a huge uh, knock in that stigma. And we're only, you know, slowly unwinding. And obviously there's, like I said, uh, and like you're fighting in your own right, there's different things in regards to access that we still haven't gotten to, but that's why some, someone like yourself and myself and many others in the community are trying to, uh, keep fighting, keep fighting for what uh, isn't uh, allowed yet. And, uh, you know, what things that we still see that uh, are lingering in the, the end of uh, prohibition. You know, on the, the second year anniversary, I was asked, uh, with the exception of the at-home grow law in Manitoba, which I'm currently fighting for, mm -hmm. what, what would I like to see change in the, you know, let's call it uh, season three of Canada legalization coming up on, you know, next year will be the third year. My answer was um, advertising. So, you know, when you're watching yeah. that UFC event or your favorite sport event, the, the brewery commercial comes on, shows a bunch of people enjoying the, the beer, how it's made. Obviously, I'd love to see that on the cannabis side. If you were to say like the number one rule in Canada you'd like to see changed or regulation loosen, loosened, what would that be? Well, interesting you say that because obviously that's one of them um, as uh, both an, an athlete and a patient. Uh, obviously, there's things I'm doing as a patient, but uh, as an athlete and, and for my next fight, I'll be both the fighter and the promoter for it. So one of the ways I've uh, looked to kind of, again, uh, work, not necessarily work around it, work in company with that is uh, I, my next fight will be a 19 and 21 plus gated event. So it'll create that safe and open place for uh, legal cannabis and uh, what do you call it, uh, the, the um, promoting of a, uh, a product that is for sale and again is incorporated in regards to the event in an educational adult way. So that's something I'm looking to continue to do and obviously again there, there are reasons why some of these uh, rules and regulations have been put into place and the loosening slowly. Uh, I think it's obviously to get society um, or what they think they need to get society uh, ready for. But I think uh, especially adults who are the ones that are supposed to be uh, consuming cannabis on a, um, especially the, the regular, uh, sorry, the um, recreational side, uh, you know, we're adults. Uh, if we can see a beer commercial, we should definitely be able to see a cannabis commercial and make our own, uh, uh, you know, judgment from it. No, I, I totally agree with you. So, uh, you know, the last question I have, uh, you know what I'm doing here in Manitoba, you know, the federal, uh, federal government legalized the right to grow up to four plants here in Manitoba. They said, no way, we're going to give you a $2,500 fine instead if we catch you doing it. So I have that constitu constitutional challenge going on. Do you have a message to, you know, the Manitobans as they wait or other people who are, you know, wanting to, to you know, file a constitutional challenge for something they believe in? you have anything uh, you want to say kind of motivational for everyone? 
Yeah, just keep fighting. Um, as someone who's been putting uh, four years into my own uh, of fight, uh, uh, obviously there was the component of my original fight being in the US where it was a, a roadblock and countless roadblocks. Coming back to Canada, uh, I think even if there is uh, those roadblocks today, I think there is a way based on precedent and our rights uh, that you'll eventually win. It's just time. Uh, same thing as I tell anyone uh, that wants to get into MMA, just showing up is the first step. Fighting is the first step. And it's just going to go keep going from there if you uh, uh, essentially uh, outweigh your partner, outwork your partner. You know, I've, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. I've seen you on The Ultimate Fighter, watched a lot of your fights, and, and what you're doing now for the cannabis community is truly amazing. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to do this with me. Um, it really means a lot. You know, you're, in my eyes, you're, you have a, you're, you're a superstar in the, in the UFC side. You're, you're a superstar in the, the cannabis community side. So is, is any, any final thoughts you want to say? Or, or... Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's always uh, a pleasure uh, chatting, and obviously... Um, talking about what we're both doing in uh, in the space, and uh, honestly, um, it, it's always a pleasure to uh, connect with like-minded people fighting on the cannabis side of history. So, uh, to you and to everyone else watching, uh, keep fighting on. Thank you so much. We'll be I'll be definitely checking out your fight. Um, I'll be posting, you know, where to watch it when it when you know you're you're throwing down and all the lead up to it. So, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Look forward to it too. Cheers.